I did check on everything right. Mm -hmm. Alright, copy. Did we start? Yeah, it's recording, <laughs> we can start whenever. Okay. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, Katie. Nice Hi. to see you again. You as well, how are you doing? Good, good. Welcome everyone to the chair room. My favorite, my personal favorite room in the church. Is it? Yeah. Yeah. I spent a lot of time in chair rooms as a kid. Yeah. Um, because I was a, a, a church kid. Yeah. A pastor's kid. A pastor's kid. <laughs> yeah. That's and where so they live, I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty sure. <laughs> and we climbed on the chairs. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Totally. I remember you climbing on chairs. And I remember yeah. my kids climbing on chairs. And <laughs> I wish I could remember myself climbing on chairs because it seemed like a lot of fun. But I didn't grow up doing that. So. That's too bad. I climbed trees. <laughs> trees are good. Too. They're not chairs, but they're no, pretty good. They are pretty good. Um, <laughs> I have a memory of okay. my brothers when I was a little bit older mm -hmm. climbing on chairs in the chair room. Mm -hmm. And we used to do like shoulder rides. Mm -hmm. Not piggyback rides, but like the person's sitting on your shoulders. Yeah. And we, we decided to try and see if we could stack three of us high. Uh, so me and then my brother on my <laughs> shoulders and our other brother on his shoulders. Nice. Um, yeah. How did that end? Well, oh good. We did it. It was great. It was fun. <laughs> Thank goodness. <laughs> yeah. Um, uh, yeah. Not not the smartest. Kid. Oh, but but pretty pretty fun. Yeah, fun. Yeah, yeah. Fun, fun right. and smart often don't go together. <laughs> as it turns out. It's true. It's true. Um, it was a good time. Yeah, totally. Yeah. So here we find ourselves again in another another church, another chair room, and uh, quiet in here. Yeah. Plenty of construction going on in this building currently it's at the true. church. It's true. But it's quite serene in this chair room. Yeah. I have to say. Uh, as chair rooms typically tend to be. Mm -hmm. um, they're sort of the chapel of, <laughs> of evangelical <laughs> churches, I find. That's true. That's true. The prayer room. <laughs> the prayer chair room. Yes. Yes. Uh, it's a place to store chairs and prayers. Absolutely. <laughs> yes. Yes. Yeah. So, on that note, let's get into it. Let's do that. Let's do some context. Let's do let's talk about some context. <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> uh, so, our passage for this week um, is from the book of Acts, mm -hmm. chapter 8, verses 4 to 25. Awesome. Uh, and it's dealing with uh, the story of Simon the Sorcerer, Ooh. Um, uh, which is which is uh, an exciting title for that little passage. Absolutely. Uh, and kind of neat. And mm. we're, we're not going to talk about him in the context of this. No. No. Wait for Sunday. We're we'll hear about Simon the Sorcerer. We can talk about him on Sunday. Yeah. <laughs> um, but we have been talking about the Holy Spirit mm -hmm. over the past number of weeks. Yeah. And really briefly on Sunday, I got to touch on uh, sort of this pattern of the Holy Spirit coming mm -hmm. to different sets of people and how there's sort of this, these dramatics surrounding that. Mm -hmm. uh, so we have Pentecost, mm -hmm. right, of course. We've got uh, tongues of fire, which is seems really crazy. Quite dramatic. Yeah. Uh, tongues of fire going throughout the room and yeah. resting on people's heads, which yeah. seems like the exact sort of thing you teach your children not to <laughs> play with and do. Um, yeah. And that's happening. Yeah. Uh, and people speaking in tongues, yeah. uh, not of fire, tongues of different languages. Yeah. Um, languages which they did not speak previously. Yeah. Very dramatic. Absolutely. Uh, serious, serious manifestations of the Spirit there. Yeah. Uh, and that's just this first sort of initial group yeah. of believers that were following Jesus already yeah. at that point. Yeah. Um, the first like 100, 120 people. Yeah. Uh, it doesn't stop there, though. It doesn't stop there. No. No. Um, and after that, after that, the church starts to grow. Thousands are being added to their number, mm -hmm. uh, and at some point during that, uh, there was a uh, sounds like a very localized earthquake. Yeah. Um, the, the the go ahead. Yeah, and that comes out of a time where the first sort of like rumblings after Christ's death of the mm -hmm. church being really persecuted happen when when um, some of the disciples are jailed and they get out and the church is kind of stuck in a desperate place. This now growing church. Yeah. They're gathering together, they're praying. Yeah. And what happens? It's, it's sort of like the precursor to persecution that's going on. Yeah. Because yeah. they're sort of being held on trial, but they're being released right yeah. away. They're not, yeah. No one's like held really. Yeah. No one's, no one's been killed yet. Yeah. Like that. But 
they can feel it it is getting tight. But it's like the start and then it's a lot of really like social anxiety and unrest going on because of them. Yeah, for sure. Uh, and then the persecution starts, uh, and the church is like sort of blown up. Yeah, people are spread out uh, around. Scattered. Yeah, scattered exactly, having to flee Jerusalem, uh, and Philip. The evangelist goes to Samaria, mm -hmm. uh, and that's where our passage for this week happens. Um, and and Simon is preaching, or so Philip is preaching, and these people are uh, coming to Christ yeah. and, and accepting the gospel and the good news, and that's that's great. But they don't receive the Holy Spirit right away. Um, yeah, which is weird. Which is interesting, right? Yeah, yeah. and it seems sort of strange, uh, yeah. and so. So they send Peter and John mm -hmm. from Jerusalem to Samaria mm -hmm. in order to lay hands on these people and um, ask God to give them the Holy Spirit. Yeah. Uh, and he does. And Absolutely. what happens is, sorry, I'm just checking my notes here. Um, yeah, so they, they receive the Holy Spirit. There's, there's signs and wonders and mm -hmm. healings being performed. Yeah. Uh, and it's very dramatic. Yeah. Uh, again. And that's the little catches uh, Simon Kosher's eye. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> we were not going to discuss. Right, we're not going to discuss. We're, we're not talking about right for now. Sunday. That's not what we're talking about right now. Yeah. Um, but yeah, that's what's going on. Mm -hmm. um, and it kind of raises this question of, well, why? Mm -hmm. Why aren't these people receiving the Holy Spirit? And it kind of raises the question of, why are there dramatics, like extra heightened dramatics, yeah. around the Holy Spirit? At particular times, when yeah. these, these groups of people are, are receiving it, yeah. and why doesn't that happen every time someone receives the Holy Spirit? Yeah. Um, Good question. Great question. Right. Do you have any answers for us? Or just well, I have some it? thoughts. I would be interested to hear your thoughts. Okay. Uh, if you if you have any regarding that. Uh, yeah, I do. I think that. Um, I mean, well, my first thought right off the bat is is that we need to pay attention to this, um, the movement that's happening here. Mm -hmm. We are starting in Jerusalem and then the surrounding area, and then next we're going to Samaria, mm -hmm. which is exactly what Jesus had commanded um, his disciples to do. So, um, so yeah, it's, it's, it's like we're seeing in real time this mm -hmm. following out of the Great Commission by the original disciples and, 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 and church, in the same progression, and some of that is probably they're they're taking the commands of Jesus to heart and they're doing it. And some of it is a little bit almost like seems accidental, <laughs> right? Yeah, it does kind of. It does, right? Like Philip's going to Samaria, but part of the going out to Samaria is happening because of this persecution that's that's going, and then he has to call um, uh, disciples to come mm -hmm. and lay their hands on it, and, and they didn't. It's like they were waiting for that that kind of sign to go, mm -hmm. um, even though Jesus had already told them <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that they should go. And it's like typical, really. Yeah, but it's like the Holy Spirit is partnering with them and in this patient way, and um, of of using them in a way that that like Jesus said that He would use them, mm -hmm. even being patient and taking time with them yeah. for them to arrive and lay hands on on Samaria so they can be part of that. Right to, to 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 demonstrate to them that they're they are part of the work that he's doing. Yeah. Um. That's that's my thoughts. What are yours? Yeah, I think that's that's really good. Um. I want to quickly talk about the the sort of other instances of this happening. Mm -hmm. uh, moving forward, because it plays into my answer pretty yeah, strongly. Yeah. 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 Um, so so the other the the next sort of point is so now the the gospel of the spirit has gone out to. Uh, all these Jews, and then, then Samaritans now too, who are mm -hmm. like related to the Jews, yeah. kind of like estranged, estranged yeah. family members. Yeah. Um, I think we're gonna have to pause for a moment there. We got some laughter. Oh, it's fine. We're gonna keep going. Uh, the next group uh, mm -hmm. is when when Peter visits Cornelius. Mm -hmm. uh, and Cornelius is a Gentile, yeah. and Cornelius ends up receiving the Holy Spirit from mm -hmm. Peter. Yeah. And what leads up to that is. Uh, Peter having this vision mm -hmm. from God uh, of this big like, 
deep spring that was in it before yeah. then. With a sheet coming down. A sheet coming down with all this clean, clean stupid. Mm -hmm. uh, and and it, it, yeah, it's, it's very dramatic and it's mm -hmm. very, very significant uh, and, and theologically very significant. Yeah. Cornelius also mm -hmm. receives um, a messenger, an angel, that mm -hmm. comes and appears to him and tells him to send for Peter, who's nearby. Mm -hmm. uh, so there's this divine conspiracy going on mm -hmm. to bring Peter and Cornelius together. Mm -hmm. And when they do, and Peter prays for this group of Gentiles and lays hands on them, they receive the Holy Spirit too. Mm -hmm. And so now the Holy Spirit has come into this new people group again, mm -hmm. and it's sort of the... It's actually not the final one, which is mm -hmm. really interesting. Um, so that happens, and and again, there's dramatic like, speaking in tongues and mm -hmm. and just an outpouring of, mm -hmm. of the Holy Spirit that is heightened and like above and beyond what is usual. Mm -hmm. And finally, we have one more time in Acts where this sort of thing happens, and it's actually Paul. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and Paul uh, and his companions are meeting with some disciples of John the Baptist mm. uh, who don't know the entire gospel yeah. and they explain to them more fully and then they lay hands on them and pray for them and they also receive the Holy Spirit mm -hmm. and so what happens what I see in mm -hmm. all of this that's going on is um, this is sort of like verification yeah. um, of of authenticity, yeah, and so we've got we've got undeniable signs of of God mm -hmm. being involved all these ways through, yeah, uh, and as the Spirit is poured out to new set of people, it's like yes, stamp that um, they are accepted, they are part of the family, and mm -hmm. and bang, this yeah. is actually the Holy Spirit yeah. for real, the same Holy Spirit, and I think part of the reason mm -hmm. that the Spirit doesn't come until John and Peter show up. Mm -hmm. for the Samaritans yeah. is that these are like original apostles like yeah. core inner group yeah. people yeah. and if anyone is going to vouch for the authenticity of this yeah. and have that be taken seriously yeah. it is these two guys That's right. yeah. uh, and so they're like yes we can confirm to all of you in Jerusalem yeah. who've been following us that yeah. they are now equally yeah. full of the Holy Spirit yeah. along with us and it's like same movement, you same Holy Spirit. Totally, and yeah. you cannot have a stronger reputation than that. Yeah, that's right. And then we work our way along, and it's still happening every time that a new group of people mm. receives the Holy Spirit in this new dramatic way. Mm. It is one of the original apostles. Yeah. And then finally, yeah. sort of the Spirit has gone out to all people groups, because we've got Gentiles, Samaritans, uh, Jewish people, everyone sort of involved now. Mm -hmm. yeah. And yet, yet, and yet, yeah. Paul comes across this group of believers who yeah. don't have the full picture, yeah. and Paul is now able yeah. to do this. And it's yeah. sort of a stamp of, mm. and Paul is one of these disciples yeah. too. That's, That's right. part of what sort of verifies Paul as uh, an, an equal member alongside yeah. the, the Twelve. Yeah. Um, and I think, mm -hmm. you know, we have this great theology, especially you know, with our with our roots, mm -hmm. and with our tradition of, of sort of congregationalist movements. Mm -hmm where we believe in a nation of priests. We are mm -hmm. made of a nation of priests with one high priest, yeah. which is Christ, yeah. and all arms being sort of on a level mm -hmm. beneath him. Yeah. Uh, and Paul being the one to lay hands on and distribute the Holy Spirit at that point sort of solidifies that. Mm -hmm. It's no longer this twelve that are set up above the rest and mm -hmm. distributing the Holy Spirit on their own. Mm -hmm. But now Paul is, is brought into it. And that sort of opens the door for all believers. Yeah. Uh, and we were all um, sort of uh, messengers and deliverers of this Holy Spirit. Yeah. Uh, and it's it's so kind of beautiful that way. Yeah. And it's, a, it's an equal <laughs> legacy for all of us that we're all yeah. part of this together. It's Not only in receiving the Holy Spirit, but in even being able to work with mm. it and under it and be a part of the giving yeah. of that, which is mindful, mindful. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Oh, man. Powerful, powerful stuff. Yeah, yeah and, and and you know my prayer is that we would, um, we would we would walk in that. Mm -hmm. You know whether or not we ever see the kind of uh, dramatic events that we see in Acts. Mm -hmm. That's not really the point. The point is like the work of what the Holy Spirit was doing that through that, 
yeah. of, of changing lives, of, of, of changing communities, and, um, and, and the fruit of the Holy Spirit kind of way. And yeah. that, that's what we really want to see. And the, and the dramatics of that is wonderful when it's needed to verify, yeah. I'd say. Um, but that's not the end goal. Right. And I pray that we would see that end goal of our city, Abbotsford, being uh, touched by the Holy Spirit in such a way that the kind of community and life and, and, and radical commitment to mm-hmm. Jesus that we see in the book of Acts is birthed here. Amen. Anyway. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Commitment to God and commitment to the well-being of, of other people and, and his creation in general. Yeah. Yeah. Seeing his glory cover the earth. And to, you know? to just just mm-hmm. you know, wrap and kind of yeah. work for that community. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Love that. Yeah. yeah. Kingdom come. Amen. 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 Well, cheers, you guys. Cheers, Nate. Yeah, cheers. <laughs> Have a great week. <laughs> Thanks, everybody. <laughs> Bye.